Hello, and welcome back to the Ask the Color Expert podcast. Today's special guest is Athena Kurlancic. She is at the Grove Salon in Lake Nona, Orlando. We had the pleasure of meeting in person at a color class recently, and I invited her to be on the podcast, and I'm so happy to have her with me here today. Welcome, Athena. Thanks for being here. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me. This is amazing. So as you can see by her gorgeous accent, there's a reason her name is Athena. She has the best, best accent. She's beautiful. That's when I love that this podcast is also video and audio. So you can see my beautiful guest and get to know them a little bit more without just, just a voice on a podcast. So um, Athena, it was such a great um, pleasure to meet you at the class um, when we met in Sarasota. Um, right away, I could see how passionate you are about hair color and the industry. So I'm really excited to share you with my listeners and maybe talk about, you know, a few tips that have made you so successful, things that you do differently. I know what I would say you do differently. I learned a lot as much from you during the class as the person teaching the class. So um, what, what do you think um, is something that sets you apart in the salon, I'm sure it's a large salon. There's other hairdressers in there. And I know it can be difficult to um, build a clientele when you have a lot of people in a salon. So what would you say the number one thing is that helps you stand out in your salon? So honestly, you know, um, doing hair is not just a job for me. It's never been a job for me. It's my passion. That's what I love to do. Uh, I'm very artistic. So I love creating beautiful hair, beautiful, anything that I touch, I, I really want to give it my 100%. And um, honestly, the one thing that it sets me out from, not in my salon, but in, in general, it's, I don't see it as a job. It's a passion. It's, you know, like, I want to leave there thinking I did great hair and not just like, oh, another day of work, you know? And I, I think, honestly, this is all I've seen it in my whole entire life. And I just want to get better and better and better at what I do. So I am that one hairstylist who I keep learning all the time. It doesn't matter how long I've been doing hair. It's, it's constantly I'm learning something new. I and, I, and how long have you been doing hair? Oh, gosh. Oh, when people ask me that, I'm like, ah, I, it's 20 years. I've been doing hair since I was 18 years old. I started doing hair, honestly, when I was like even younger, doing my friend's hair every time we went out. Um, but like I said, to me, years mean nothing. I work with people that they just graduated from school and they do amazing hair. And then also I work with people who has done hair longer than I have. And they're kind of so stuck up on that same routine of theirs then they don't want to expend a little bit more and, you know, learn more stuff. So I'm, like I said, constantly, whoever I really like, and I, I look up to them, if they have a class, I would, I will be the first one to run there and, and take their class. I love that. And I love that your answer was passion, not seeing it as a job and education. I'm sure everyone listening was waiting for you to give some secret tip or technique or something that you do, you know, something you add into your color that's a secret. I love that the overarching theme was education, education, education. I 1000% agree. I've been doing this 35 years. Uh, to Exactly to your point, when I see something, you know, that interests me on somebody else's social media or I, I've seen somebody's work and I'm like, oh my gosh, how did they do that? I never stop learning as well. Now, one of the advantages that you have over me is you get to do what you learn right away in the salon. Um, when we had gone to that class, I took notes. I thought I took great notes. I should have done more video and I waited almost a year to actually try the technique. And I reached out to you and said, oh my gosh, help. What did I do wrong? <laughs> it was so bad when I did it. And you're like, no. And I saw on your social media, how beautiful your results were. So that's an example. The two of us sat in the same exact room at the same exact class, but because you took what you learned, went immediately back to your salon and hit the ground running and did it, that was the difference between you and I in taking on that technique. And I know from teaching, from being on both sides of it, from teaching at shows and from being at classes and shows, if you don't take what you learn and just drop the fear and put it into practice, you're going to forget. You know, it's important right. to actually put it into practice. 
And honestly, too, I feel like that's what makes us uh, better as hairstylists, too, because the first time I tried that technique, I was like, oh, you know, some of the pieces in the back, like the blending wasn't as perfect as I wanted to. But you know what? I was like, next time I'm going to do this, you know, and, and it's I feel like that's how we learn. And sometimes as a hairstylist, we put ourselves down and we constantly thinking, I'm not good at this. I'm not good at that. Well, we're not going to get good if we don't keep on doing it. We all made mistakes. We all done the same mistakes too. So all the people out there, then we look at them and we think they're perfect. They make mistakes too. So I, I, I think practice makes you better and learning makes you better. And, and then you create your own technique. You know, the class that we took, honestly, believe it or not, I'm using her technique as my reverse balayage. So that is the technique I use when somebody says, I want to go darker now instead of lighter. So I, added a few things here and there from my own or like other classes that I've taken. And I turned that into be a reverse balayage. I love that so much. I love that you didn't, you know, sometimes people get in their head when they're out of class and they think that everything has to be exactly like they just learned in the class, but you're taking, because you're going to so many different educational opportunities, you're taking all the special nuances from each thing and creating your own and making that your signature. And it shows in your social media, your pictures are amazing. So on that topic, do you have any advice? Because I know myself, it frustrates me to no end to see, you know, I'll do a before and after, and it's like such an extreme makeover in person. And I'm by myself in a room right. with just myself and the model. And I'm like, Ooh, this is so great. And then I take a picture and it does, I don't even post it. I don't post it. I don't put it in my education because you can't see what a difference that it made. And I've taken classes from other hairdressers who teach photography tips. I've taken classes from actual photographers. I have the big uh, reflector things that pop up and you can put next to their face. I have the photographer's light boxes. I have a ring light. I have all the toys, but I still never love my pictures and yours are amazing. So what advice would you give to me and those listening um, for getting that perfect shot after you've worked so hard to do the color? So first of all, thank you so much. Cause I feel like that is my weakness too. Like the pictures, because I try so many different things. Um, I don't remember if you remember in the class we took, like how she was telling us uh, against the window, she had that beautiful window. So one thing about my station is I have a beautiful window. So mm -hmm. it helps a lot with like the lighting. So I don't have to have all the fancy stuff around me. And I have a whole team. If I tell you the stuff that we go through to take one of my pictures, it's crazy. <laughs> tell us though, tell us. That's what I, I want to know. <laughs> Funny because sometimes I'm like, I should take a picture of myself taking pictures of the clients just so people think like it's not what it seems on social media. But I've had my receptionist or assistant have their hands in the back of my client's hair and squat down so they can look thicker. You know, I have them put their hand behind their back. I mean, I mean, I had it takes a whole village to, to get something. So it definitely takes a lot of work. But um I take 50,000 pictures and uh, I do have few apps and I learned through some other classes that, you know, can help me out a little bit more. One of my favorites, uh, it's Snapseed. I don't know if you have that. I but, have it, but I, I don't know how to use it. I always download them when I hear about them and then I'm like, I don't know how to use this. I need instructions. Uh, so that, <laughs> My, I use that all the time. And for my videos, I use InShot. I'm not very good with video, so I'm just kind of learning that too. But uh, with uh, InShot, there is this little perspective little uh, on, on the tool side. And you can actually drag the, the picture. You, you don't change the color because I definitely don't like changing the colors of my client's hair. But you can actually move the hair up and down to make it appear thicker or longer. Wow, okay. Sometimes if I don't get a good picture, I'm like, okay, I can make it a little bit thicker, you know? But that's pretty much it. That's all I do just to make it more focused and be more of the hair. And then um, now recently, my new obsession is um, airbrush. And what I do is I like to uh, blur the background. So the focus is the hair. I don't use it all the time because sometimes I, if it's like super blonde hair, it makes it look too blurry, but only on certain type of hair. But honestly, I try like everybody else. It takes me forever. I feel like sometimes it's harder to take the pictures and actually do the hair. Um, 
I love my team. I mean, they would literally drop everything to come and help me out because they know how I love pictures. To me, it's like my favorite thing because that is our new portfolio right now. Absolutely. And I love that you said, I love my team because you have witnessed as well as I have all the changes in the industry and we're really swaying to one side in the solo suite you know, someone by themselves with a door closed and a row full of different businesses. I tried it when I first moved to Florida because I had always owned a salon and had many employees and we had a commission structure and I loved the team environment. I love the energy of working with other people. But when I came to Florida, I was like, you know, at this point, the hair that I'm doing is more for education. I'm not doing that every four week client. So the thoughts of like meeting a whole new staff, trying to fit in the culture, all those things. I was like, you know what? Let me just try this little sweet model that would probably be the perfect fit. Well, it was so lonely. And and to your point about photos, I had the big shield that the photographers use to bounce the light off of, but I had to have the model try to hold the shield down here so that you couldn't see her hand. And then I'm trying to hold the other side of the shield and take the picture. And, you know, not just for pictures, but just... You know, you know that moment probably when you first came back from the class that we met, when you first nailed it and you did something different and your coworkers gather around and go, oh my gosh, that looks amazing. It makes the client feel great. It makes you feel great. There's that check-in, you know, there's that um, social proof that you're doing a great job where when you're completely on your own, it can get lonely. So I'm, you know, I'm trying to see where the industry is going to end up. I'm, I'm curious to see if people are going to start to circle back and go back into group environments, but maybe like a cooperative environment because they liked being self-employed, but don't necessarily love being totally alone, if that makes sense. So it should be interesting, you know, how the trends go. So I'm excited to hear that you're in a commission salon. We still have a commission set up. It's still working for us. So, you know, hopefully it's, it's here to stay for a long time. Um, it was always really great for camaraderie, community, education, sharing, all of those things. Um, and of course, there's the negative. There's the, you know, right. the, the mean girl and the backroom bitching and all the other things. But I think, I think now having people change over to a solo suite model because of the mean girl and the, and the negative culture, I think has woken up a lot of commission-based salons to clean up their culture. So it sounds like you have an amazing culture to begin with. See, I'm very lucky when it comes to that, to that kind of stuff, because I am that type of person that if I learn something, I will share with anybody. To me, a learning something, it's like a recipe. You want to share with other people. And just because you share it, that doesn't mean that they're going to become better than you or everybody has their own little like magic on them so it, the, to me it doesn't matter sharing something but um also I feel that being on your own people a lot of people think like oh I can make my own schedule I'm gonna make 100% of the commission and I, and and it, it doesn't work like that nobody nobody makes 100% you know so if you like being by yourself uh, go for it more power to you I and I noticed too with my clients even clients they like being in a bigger space because they like seeing other people around and they just it we're kind of like the not necessarily the old-fashioned but they like seeing like oh my gosh I love how your co-worker did so and so's hair and I and I feel like it's something for them to do too instead of sitting in a tiny little square place you know and just just you and them and that's it. And, you know, you got the stylist and they don't like to talk and they focus on their uh, on their job. So I feel like to me, that's kind of weird being in a room by yourself and not talking at all. So, um, but you know what, to each your own. I mean, if it works for you, more power to you. I support anybody. I just, I'm very lucky with my coworkers. They support me. I always get the, oh my God, your job is beautiful. And it makes you feel a little bit better too, because then you're like, oh my gosh, I nailed this. Everybody saw it. So I can like do it again. And there's times when you're like, oh my God, I should have left it five more minutes. Like, you know, I, I, I'm the biggest critic to myself as well too. So I can do something amazing that everybody thinks is amazing. But for me, I look it back and I was like, God, I could have left the toner for five more minutes or I could have curled it this way. I could have brushed it a little bit better. So we, it's you're always going to have those. But when somebody else gives you like, oh, my God, you're crazy. That was beautiful. It, it starts making you feel a little bit better as well, too. Absolutely. Something I think, I mean, COVID has been horrible for all of us, especially the salon industry. And 
It also has let us put a magnifying glass on our schedules, on the way that we were running our book, squeezing people in, those type of things has gone to the wayside. So to your point about the five more minutes with the toner, we've all been there where you're blowing out your client and you're like, oh my gosh, five more minutes I could have used, or I, I should have left that one piece in the front with the lightener on a little longer to get rid of that gold because now I can't tone it away. Um, but now with with COVID having us see less people, I think it's been a gift for us to see just how amazing we can be with just a little more time. Sometimes it's not that we aren't educated or we don't know what we're doing. It's that we're not being given enough time to do what we really want to do. Um, when you were a younger stylist, what would you say was your biggest struggle or hurdle? Like for someone listening that may be newer in the industry, what did you find to be the biggest struggle when it came to hair color? The hair coloring, I would say placement. That has always been one. Did you hear me? Mm -hmm. I, uh, to me, I would say it was placement. Um, I kind of always did the same technique on everybody. So it's it's uh, that's what I kind of like about this new industry now because you kind of look and see and you're realizing, oh, if I want to get this look, then I can place it here. If I want to create this kind of or add more depth. And so to me, that's what helping me. And I'm still having a little bit of a hard time with that as well, too, because I still sometimes in my head and I'm thinking, oh, if I place it here, it's going to look great. And then I'm like, oh, I will never do that again, you know, because and, and that's the another good part, too, that we have all these mannequins and we can actually practice, you know, at home, all these new placements and I come out sometimes or um, I don't know if uh, about you, but sometimes I'll take all these different classes and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do that from that person, that from that person. And then I just kind of like make up this whole hot mess in my head. And sometimes it, it comes out beautiful. And other times I was like, oh, maybe not for certain type of hair. Um, but placement, I would say it's one thing that I'm still kind of like learning and maybe a little bit of struggle, a struggle too. But um but you know what? I'm still keep going and I'm trying to learn. And, you know, sometimes it is what it is. I have great clients. So and I don't know about you, but I've, I'm definitely that hairstylist who I'm like, oh, that does not look good. We are going to do something else. And I, I tell them that, too, because I don't want them to leave and then see it at home and then realize, oh, my gosh, what did she do? You know, so I think that's another thing that I created with my clients, a big trust. So they trust me to the point that I can be like, let's do this today. And they're like, okay. So they don't get bored with me. And then also they know that if I don't like it, I will not let them walk outside with, with anything that I don't like. I love that. Cause you know, we've all been guilty of that one time where you're just so behind and you're so sweaty and exhausted. And you're just like, you don't have an ounce of you left and you have another client waiting. And there's that one piece for me, it's usually right at the swirly calic right here at the top of their head. And if, if the hair is done beautifully, it's hidden, but if the wind blows or if the calic pops up, oh no, that little splotch is in there. And I've always been conflicted because I'm such a perfect, they're loving it. They even looked in the mirror and saw the spot and everything. And I'm like, how do they not see that? So there's always that, oh, if I say something, I might be here till midnight fixing it. If I don't say something, I'm not going to sleep. We've all been there where you just didn't say anything. And then you're like, why didn't I fix it? And I've actually gone to the point of calling the person the next day saying, you know what? I just, I couldn't sleep last night. There was a piece in the back of your head that I should have redid. And I didn't want to keep you there. I knew you had to get home to your kids, but can you come back in tomorrow and let me work on that one piece? And they so appreciate that. So I'm sure your guests appreciate that as well. And I love that you said, um, you know, I try over and over again on my doll head. I think a lot of people think, that working on a doll head or practicing something means that we don't feel confident. Um, one of the things that, that stands out to me when I interview educators and people who've been in the industry for 35 to 40 years, the first thing that they say is strand test. And these are, you know, Sonia Dove said it in her interview with me, Beth Minardi. These are people who are icons in our industry. And when they're not sure about what the hair is going to do, especially if it's, you know, maybe dark hair that's going back light or, you know, someone who's too red and wants to go cool or, or that kind of thing corrective, they're still doing a strand test. So I feel like newer stylists 
look at a strand test as you're showing the client you're not confident. And it's quite the opposite, I think. I think the client would appreciate having one piece go wrong versus, you know, the entire hair go wrong. I agree with you with that. And I feel like the new generation too, what they do. I actually recently became an educator too. So I- Oh, yeah. I was going to say that. I, I see this in your future with all of this knowledge you need to start to share. I'm excited about that. But I, I see it too with our new generation um, is that um, in our consultation, we overpromise. And you know now clients, they bring you a picture and you're like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I, I never say- that's how your hair is going to look because like you're saying, we don't know how the hair is going to lift up. We don't, I mean, you can say, I will try my best to get you that way, but before there, maybe you can be like this first, you know? So don't overpromise your client anything because your hair is not the same as my hair and so on. And then online, you can't trust everything. And I think that's another thing when we get caught up with all these pictures online, it's, it's really not necessarily the true color and no shade to anybody else. But I just feel like everybody's hair is different. So let's take it step by step. And I'm not, I'm a little bit guilty about the strength test because I only do that if they have box color. I'm not going to lie. So if they have like their hair grown out and it's their natural hair color, I, I can work with that and I'm pretty confident. But if it's a box color, then definitely I highly recommend a strand test because Still to this day, people don't understand how hard it is to remove box color and especially years of box color. Absolutely. I love when clients are like, well, look at the box. Can't you just put this, you know, Heather Locklear blonde box on my black hair and make me blonde? And they really don't understand it. Although clients are getting a hold of way too much information on YouTube and Instagram and they think that they are colorists now, they do know, know a little too much. Um, I am excited to hear that you're going to start educating. And I know that people listening to me are just perked up when they heard that. So tell people how they can find you, how they can find out about your education. Um, so right now, I haven't started yet. I just uh, became an educator. So I'm still working on my schedule. Um, hopefully pretty soon I'm going to put a link on my um, my page uh, and take it from there. I'm just trying to work on the things that I want to teach and um I don't, um, I don't know about you, but I only like, you know, we were the hairstylists and we did everything, you know, I mean, us who've done hair for 20 years, we've done it all. And I'm finally realizing then doing everything is not making you the best. So I'm trying to focus on what I really, really enjoy to do. That's what I really want to teach because it will come easier for me to do that because I really love doing that instead of just, let me teach you how to roll a perm, for example, you know, oh, no. so I'm working on that right now and we were just on vacation too. So I'm just wrapping myself back again to the new year to find out all those little details. So share your Instagram handle and then they can at least stay in touch with you. So my Instagram handle is artsy, A-R-T-S-Y, hair goddess. And my name is Athena and I'm originally from Greece, since you said about my accent earlier. So sometimes I might little post, you know, even those little hair caption, and sometimes I'm like, it takes me forever to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, th I think you should have education in Greece. You should have a hair color retreat in Greece. I'll be the first to, to sign up for that. That would be amazing. I would love that. That would be <laughs> a true for sure. Let's do it. Well, thank you so much for today. You and I could talk forever and I'm really really excited. And I am here to support you with your education any way that I can, because you really are a gift to the industry. And I think that other stylists could really learn a lot about having passion for what you do and not being afraid with different placements and, you know, jumping right in and trying new things. So thank you for your time. Thank you everybody for listening and we will see you on the next one. Thank you so much.